Who are the four top refiners in MDR? Dylan, 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 and Dylan. I really could not wait to make this video because it's about time we talked about the real MVP of season one, Dylan G. Dylan is one of those characters that you might have initially assumed to exist in the story for comic relief. With his razor sharp tongue, brutally honest way of communicating, and total obsession with outperforming his colleagues for silly knickknacks and some not so silly knickknacks. I can't blame you for coming to that conclusion. However, many of us, myself included, were surprised to discover that there is a lot more to this character than meets the eye. Dylan is the character whose backstory we know least about, especially when it comes to his Audi's life. That said, we can still make a pretty good assessment of the character based on his actions on Lumen's severed floor. Let's take a deep dive into this character and hopefully gain greater insight into what he's about. Welcome to the Nautilus Files. If you're a regular here, you already know the drill. So to all the newcomers, be warned. This video is going to be full of spoilers that will no doubt ruin your day if you haven't watched Severance yet. By the way, why haven't you watched Severance yet? If that is the case, you can stop the video now, watch Severance, lose your natural mind, then come back and watch this video. I promise you, it will all be worthwhile. Okay, spiel over, let's begin. Dylan G, or more accurately, Dylan George, is introduced to us as a severed employee who wastes no time identifying himself as the resident go-getter with a penchant for sharing his unsolicited opinions with absolutely no filter. Dylan is reward-driven, and all he seems to really care about is what he can get out of his employer. He pursues performance goals set by Lumen that usually end with him receiving some kind of reward, and over his time at Lumen, Dylan has acquired quite a lot of them, an entire treasure trove of, well, these things. When Heli is first introduced to the crew, Dylan perceives her as a threat to his dominance as the guy. At first, he's standoffish and tries to intimidate Heli, warning her off any attempts at trying to compete with him for the top spot. Dylan makes a point of showing off his desk full of goodies as a way of showing her what she's gonna have to compete with if she tries him. Of course, to us, this seems juvenile, because it is. The funny but tragic reality of it is that companies really do things like this, and a lot of times it works. As for Dylan, being a severed office hermit gives him a uniquely narrow perspective. So to him, those finger traps and goofy caricature drawings are absolute treasures. Dylan's cat and mouse banter with Irving is a major point of comedy for the show and the writers make generous use of the juxtaposed personality types to create funny situations between the two men. Irving, the perpetual devotee at Lumen's beck and call, makes for an interesting comparison to Dylan's I'm just in it for the waffle party dude approach to work. Dylan's blunt personality drives Irving bananas, and Irving is constantly chastising Dylan for not behaving the way he thinks a true Luminite should. Dylan loves to push Irv's buttons at every opportunity, and we all get the benefit of sitting back and laughing at it. Dylan's view of work and Lumen are in stark contrast to Irving's. Dylan's respect for Lumen appears to be superficial at best, just enough to look like he's towing the line. There are moments where we witness his true feelings. If he doesn't process today, they won't know until Tuesday of next week. It's typical Lumen bullshit. Yep. Careful, guy. Dylan makes it plain that he doesn't trust Lumen, nor does he buy any of that pseudo-religious quackery. Dylan's perspective is more in line with Helly's when it comes to Lumen, openly displaying a contempt for the company, and they are more than willing to break the rules if there's something to gain from it. Dylan exhibits certain traits and other interesting characteristics of note. For one, he seems highly intelligent and has a strong aptitude for technical things. He knows a lot about knot tying, which is really weird. It's a weird thing to bring up. I'm looking at you, Severance Writers. What about you and Mark? <laughs> what? You two enjoy uh, sneaking off the other day? Baby goats? He's also very observant. He picks up on Mark and Helly's vibe pretty early on, maybe even before they were aware of it. He also reads the Irving and Bert thing like a book, giving Irving the third degree for making what he thinks is the grave mistake of fraternizing with a member of optics and design. As I mentioned in the character breakdown of Irving B, this scene is important because it's the first time we see Dylan showing genuine concern for a team member, proving that despite outward appearances, Dylan does feel connection and concern for his fellow refiners. I think we can say that Dylan likes himself a lot. The scene where he tries to imagine what his Audi's life is like is pure gold. Dylan apparently fancies himself a jet-setting baller that makes bank flexing muscle for a living. He stresses his confidence and boasts of his physical prowess, stating, for example, that he has the strength of two men and, of course, those deltoids. 
there are two major Dylan-centered events that take place in Severance that we simply must discuss. One is, of course, the MDE biting incident, and the other is that time Dylan did his best hero impression and made it possible for Irv, Mark, and Heli to escape Lumen to get help, albeit temporarily. After Dylan learns that Lumen can not only wake up innies on the outside, which is a major revelation, he also learns that he has a son. This piece of information changes Dylan forever, beginning his transformation into a proper protagonist and setting him on the path towards his personal conflict. Now Dylan has a mission, a goal that we the audience can get behind. The day following the OTC incident, Milchik tells Dylan that he cannot learn any more about his son and that he's expected to accept the fact that he will never even know his name, much less ever meet him as an any. Up until this moment, Dylan was driven purely by selfish desire for material gain and uh but the absurdity of his situation and he finds himself in proves too much. Milchik and all of his amazing dance moves are not enough to subdue the rage. Dylan snaps, directing all of his pent frustrations onto Milchik, surprising everyone present. One thing I did like about this scene was the fact that all of the members of MDR came to his side even though they had no idea what was going on. This is another example of that feeling of solidarity beginning to grow between them. This further galvanizes the group and pushes them towards their plans to escape Lumen. On the night of the escape, we see a very different Dylan. Well, different in his purpose, now that he's turned his strength into a tool meant to enact an exact purpose greater than himself. Dylan wants nothing more than to see his son, and to know who he is. He also knows that MDR's best chance at succeeding in getting help from the outside involves him staying behind to hold down the fort. His skill set and head for the technical make him the best candidate to run the OTC and keep Milchik at bay long enough for the rest of the crew to accomplish some good on the outside. This is a pretty big sacrifice for Dylan to make. Having a chance to see his son, even if it was only for a few minutes, would have been a more precious gift than any of the rewards stashed away at his desk. And the old Dylan might have acted selfishly and taken the chance on the outside without consideration for anyone else. When he reveals what was in the box given to him by Milchik, Milchik, that glass etching of the MDR department, we see just how much Dylan sees the outcome for his teammates as important as it is for himself. Dylan does what is best not only for himself but for everyone in MDR. This simple act is very telling and cements Dylan as a true protagonist in my opinion. Okay, so this wouldn't be the Nautilus Files if we didn't dabble in some speculation for a bit, so let's get into it. Dylan has a whole family on the outside. I know, this might be a foregone conclusion, but this is technically still a theory because we only ever see the one child. There are some signs of a female occupant in the house based on the women's clothing hanging in the walk-in closet on the left here. So if it is what it looks like and Milchik was telling the truth, Dylan is a husband and father to a big family. Also given that a severed parent would not be able to respond to emergencies related to children while at work, after all you are essentially dead to the world once you get off that elevator in Lumen, it would make sense that he has a partner, at least someone who could look after those kids in the event that something unexpected happens during his work hours. Think back to the scene where Heli returns from the break room and compares notes with Dylan about their respective experiences. What about the voice behind the door? Crying baby, you mean? No, like the angry mumbly guy. Dylan remarks that he hears a crying baby in his break room experience, while Heli hears what appears to sound like a crotchety old man's voice. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that's a younger Jane that she's hearing. Why did Dylan hear a baby crying though? Petey wrote on his version of the severed floor map, we're all in here because we're not all there. This could be taken to mean that everyone in MDR has some trauma they are grappling with. This would apply to Dylan too. Could Dylan's trauma be related to his children? This leads right into our next theory on Dylan. Okay, so the big question, the biggest of big questions, why did he choose to get severed in the first place? We have a definite answer for Mark to escape grief, a somewhat good reason for Heli to please her father, although I think there's probably more to it than that. Irving's is murky, but we know that it has something to do with him launching some sort of an investigation into Lumen. We don't get anything on Dylan regarding his reason for being severed, and that might be because it's either really simple or it's a doozy and the writers are saving it for season two. The simplest and most straightforward answer is 
money. We know that Dylan is reward driven and that he has either one or three children depending on whether you believe Milchik or not. Kids are expensive, especially nowadays, and being severed pays a very good salary. It could be that he took the servant's job to take care of his big family, although I would think that having a chip implanted into the center of your brain as a prerequisite is a very steep price to pay. Knowing that you won't even be aware that you have kids or a partner for at least eight hours of the day is a hard sell to me. Still, it could really just be this simple. A variation on this might be that he ran into some serious financial trouble that put him in desperate straits. Maybe he's a gambler. Maybe one of his children has special needs or an expensive medical procedure or some ailment that his insurance can't cover. This might drive him to say, you know what, screw it and take the servant's option as it'd be a sure bet at getting the funds he needs. One theory that would be incredibly ironic is that Dylan chose to get severed to forget he had kids in the first place. He might feel overwhelmed by the responsibility of it all, so he chose to sever himself for reasons similar to Mark. He wanted to be able to go to work and not have to think about his stressful home life. There are some theories that have sprung up on the internet about Dylan and Milchik. They come from the interpretation of the closet scene when Dylan is flipped into OTC mode with Milchik. The theories suggest that Dylan and Milchik are more than just co-workers and that they actually are a couple on the outside or maybe just roommates. This is based on how Dylan responds to Milchik when he wakes up in Audi mode. This one doesn't really work for me. There's some conflicting evidence that suggests that this is probably not true. This theory doesn't sit well when you consider Milchik's behavior at work. When we go back to the scene where a Ms. Kobo suggests that Mark has a special wellness session with Ms. Casey. Milchik is clearly not amused by this idea. I submit to you the classic Milchik, what did you say, face that he shoots at Ms. Kobo in response. I assume this is because he thinks that the connection between Mark and Gemma makes these unnecessary interactions unethical, maybe just too risky because Severance is still being tested. I don't think he would take this position, but still be totally cool with having daily interactions with Dylan if they were in a relationship or living together on the outside. When Dylan wakes up and returns to Audi mode in the closet, he hugs his son and gives a sharp look at Milchik saying, are we done here yet? I don't think there's anything beyond the surface in this scene. If anything, I read this reaction as Dylan simply being his usual semi-rude self. He's not one to bite his tongue or mince words, so he's making it clear to Milchik that he's not exactly happy about having his personal time interrupted by Lumen. I think Audi Dylan knows Milchik in the same way that all of the other members of MDR do. He's that guy that orientated them and the one they call when they need to take a sick day. Dylan shares the top spot for favorite character next to Irving and Milchik for me. I think in future episodes, we're going to see more hero daddy from Dylan, which will no doubt score a lot of points with the audience. Besides, Zach Cherry has a camera presence that makes him hard to dislike, even when he's being a wise guy 90% of the time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share your opinions, insights, and theories on this character in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you have to say. That's all for now. Take care of yourself. And until next time, off you go.